going to review how to graph transformations. In addition to that, we are also going to look how to graph square roots and cube root functions. So let's take a quick look. Now, before we get started, I want to review with you how to graph in vertex form of a quadratic because that is kind of helpful because everything we would do with a transformation for a quadratic will also work for a root. So just as a review, we would first start by saying our leading coefficient is a negative 2, which is our a value. So my a is going to be negative 2. Okay, then what we would do is we would set the inside of the parentheses equal to 0, and that would tell us our horizontal transformation, which means we're going to go 1 to the right, because if I set x minus 1 equal to 0, I get 1. And the 3 at the end means it's a vertical sh shift of 3 units up. So my vertex is going to be about right there. Now what we would do is we draw axis of symmetry, if that's helpful, and then we complete our transformation. So we pick three numbers, 1, 2, and 3. We square those, so we get 1, 4, and 9. And then we multiply by the a value, which is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. This will create that vertical stretch. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. Once we've done that, we will graph the transformation by not looking at the middle. So from my vertex, I'm going to go one right, two up, and I'm going to reflect that. Then I'm going to go two right. Wait, hold on. Catch myself. We're not going up. We're going down. Let's fix that. So we're going to go one right, two down, reflect that. Then we're going to go two right, eight down, and reflect that. Then very carefully, and I probably can't fit three, we're going to sketch in our quadratic. And you need to hang with me on this because my writing skills are not the greatest with a broken arm today. So we talked about horizontal, vertical, and we did a stretch of a negative 2 factor. So what that's going to lead us into is graphing square root and cube root functions. Now if you look at a square root, it kind of looks like a ray. The parent function for a square root begins at 0, 0, so that's kind of where like our vertex, we would normally call it, would begin, or our endpoint would be. And then it goes up and to the right going through 1, 1. Now, a square root is different than a cube root because a cube root, we can actually take cube roots of negative numbers. That's why on the cube root, it looks like a propeller because we can actually have both positive and negative numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize those ideas along with our basic ideas, and it might be helpful to write down this little table to help you out here. This is a review of the notation and how do we go about shifting. Horizontal translations are either right or left, and it's inside the square root or the cube root. It is opposite of what you would think. So if it says x minus 2, it's 2 to the right. If it says x plus 3, it's actually 3 to the left. Vertical translations are that, is that vertical move up or down. It is just the end point, whatever that value is. So a 7 at the end would be 7 units up. Negative 1 at the end would be 1 unit down. Now, if you remember, a reflection has two types of things. A negative inside means we reflect over the y-axis. So we're going to flip it from right to left or left to right over that axis. A negative on the outside is going to flip up to down or down to up of, over the x-axis. And then vertical shrink or stretch is that number in front. If the number's bigger than one, it's a stretch. 
If a number is smaller than one, it's a shrink. Now, we're not going to cover horizontal shrinks and stretches, but if you want to, you can take a look at that in the textbook. Okay, so we're going to do a series of seven examples. These are really quite fast to do. So I'm going to kind of walk you through how to do it. So our original parent function is f of x equals the square root of x. What I'm going to graph is g of x such that it is the square root of x minus 3. So first I have to figure out where that endpoint or that vertex is. So in order to do that, I have to look at what is added or subtracted from my x. Since there is a minus 3 subtracted inside, inside means opposite, that means we are going to go right 3 units. We're going to shift right 3 units. Now, there is no number added or subtracted at the end, so we're not going to go up or down any. And my number in front, if there is no number in front, is a 1. So if you look here, I chose some numbers. And notice I didn't do 1 and 2 and 3. Reason being is if I take a square root of something, I want it to have a nice pretty number. Now, could I have done 2? Yes, but you would get a decimal. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. We get rid of the middle piece. And we look at this. So my it's going to start by starting at right 3 units. So no longer is it at 0, 0. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to take, and it says I'm going to go right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 2. Well, let's think about this. That would be 4 over 2 up. Makes sense. So then all I do is, since this is a square root, it's that r, I graph it in and it looks something like that. Now, if I wanted to say what would happen to it, it translated three units to the right. Originally, my parent function would have been at, oh, and I guess I could have pl plugged one, one in. It's probably freaking out there. It would have been three units to the left. So everything basically just shifts three units to the right. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Example two. Another square root. Square root of x plus 2. Now, once again, my a value is just 1. Now, that 2 is outside, which means I don't go left or right any. I go up 2 units. So, instead of starting at 0, 0, we're going to start up at two units. Okay, so now I do my table. One, one, the square root of one is one. Square root of four is two. Square root of th nine is three. Multiplying by one does not change any of those values in the middle we do not look at. So from this point, I go one right, one up. I go four right, two up. And if I wanted to, I could go 9 possibly, right, and 3 up. It looks just like the parent function. The only difference is, is the whole graph has been shifted 3 units up. Ready for example 3? Here we go. This one we're going to start combining transformations. So once again... I look at my new function, g of x equals the square root of x plus 1, quantity minus 4. My leading coefficient is a 1. Sorry about that. So now I need to figure out what I'm going to do. 
Well, it says x plus 1 inside, but it's always opposite on the inside. So in this case, it's minus 1. The number at the end is a negative 4. So my vertex this time is going to be at negative 1, negative 4. Now I complete my table. 1 square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Timesing by 1 is not going to change any of those values. Okay, so I'm going to go 1 right, 1 up. I'm going to go 4 right, 2 up, and I'm going to go 9 right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3 up, and I'm going to graph in my parent function, or not my new, my, my new function, excuse me, not my parent function. So that's example 3. Example 4. We're going to start throwing in some numbers as leading coefficients other than 1. My a value, or my stretch this time, is a 2. A stretch of 2 means it's going to pull it vertically. I start just like I did before by identifying my vertex. Inside it says x plus 2, so if I set x plus 2 equal to 0, I get negative 2. There's nothing at the end, so that's automatically a 0. So we go negative 2, 0. I complete my table just like we did before. But this time, I take the square root and I multiply by 2 because that's going to stretch it by a factor of 2. I don't look at the middle. So it says I'm the, from my vertex or my endpoint, I'm going to go 1 right, 2 up. Then I'm going to go 4 right, 4 up. Then I'm going to go 9 right, 6 up. If you look, this one looks like really it's been stretched. It's a lot taller than the ones we've had before. It has more of an arc to it. We're over halfway there. We have three more to go over. The last one of the square root type we're going to cover is what to do when I have a little bit of both going on and a reflection. Okay, so we look at this and we say, start out with, there's nothing on the inside, so my vertex is at 0. There's nothing at the end, so it's 0 as well. Okay, my A value this time is 0.5. So then I go ahead, multiply by 0.5. But here's where the catch is on this. So normally we go 1 over and 0.5 up. But since it's negative x, it actually reflects over the y-axis. So that means instead of going 1 right a half up, we're actually going to go 1 left a half up and go two left, one up. And we're going to go three left, one and a half up. This one's a shrink, so it should be flatter than normal. It should be closer to the x-axis, but that negative x on the inside means that you take every x value and you make it negative before you do the math problem. If the negative was on the outside, you would then flip everything over the x-axis. 
Now the last couple we have are cube roots. And if you remember back, I'll cursor back here. A cube root looks like a propeller. Now all the rules that we had for square roots are also the same for cube roots. But when we pick do cube roots, we're going to want to pick positive and negative numbers. So if you look at this one, I have the quantity x minus 2 cube rooted plus 1. So my numbers are a little bit different. I picked perfect cubes. And since I have positives and negatives that I can take a cube root of, I went ahead and put them all in positive and negative. Okay. The only value I didn't put in is 0 because 0 is going to be our vertex. So just like before, we take what's inside the radical, which is x minus 2, when we set it equal to 0. That gives me 2. The number at the end is a positive 1. So my whole graph is going to be translated 2 units to the right and 1 unit up. Now what I want to do is I want to create that propeller look. Now, my value for A is 1 because there's no coefficient in front or leading coefficient. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. The cube root of 1 is 1. The cube root of 8 is 2. And then I multiply all those values by 1. I get rid of the middle. So here we go, the interesting part. We're going to go 8 to the left and 2 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 2 down. And we're going to plot a point. It's not from 0, 0, it's from your vertex or your changing point. Then we're going to go left 1, down 1, up 1, right 1, and up Sorry, over 8, up 2. Then we draw in that beautiful propeller shape. Now my domain on this and my range, if you look, is still negative infinity to positive infinity. So let's try one more and then we will be done for the day. Last one. Okay, for the sake of doing something a little more tricky, let's put a little negative with that 3 in front. So my vertex, once again, nothing inside, so that's just 0. The number at the end is negative 2. My A value is negative 3 this time. It's a cube root, so it's going to be a propeller. I take my cube root of each of those numbers. I'm just going to go ahead and fill this all in. I multiply them all by negative 3. So this ends up being 6. This ends up being 3. This ends up being negative 3. And this ends up being negative 6. I plot my vertex. 0, negative 2. Now, when we had a square root with a negative inside that reflected over the y-axis, if we do this properly, it should reflect over the x-axis this time without having to do anything in reverse. So we don't look at the middle. We're going to go left 8 and up 6. Then we're going to go left 1 up 3. 0, 0 would be just our original. We're going to go right 1, down 3. And then we're going to go right 8, down 6.
Now, if I play the connects the dots, the last one went up and to the right, but now this one goes down as you go to the right. It's because everything that was positive is now negative. And everything that was negative is now positive over that x-axis. I hope this is helpful in figuring out transformations of square roots and cube roots. You have a worksheet to complete at the conclusion of this video.